to Advanced and Performance Driving. I'm Reg Local. Today we're driving in Russia. So if you saw the previous video where we're in Finland for the day, you'll be aware that I'm over in Russia at the moment. Um, I come over here fairly regularly delivering advanced driver training to uh, Russian driving instructors. Uh, and on this visit, uh, we're in a town at the moment called Sortovala, which is in Karelia. Karelia is up uh, it's sort of north of St. Petersburg, about four or five hours north of St. Petersburg, close to the Finnish border, which is why we ended up having a drive over to Finland yesterday for the day. And uh, the guys have all been learning advanced driving, advanced driving instruction this week. We finished all the tests, so we're just go I'm just going for a bit of a drive <clears throat> just to show you what it's like driving in Russia. Um, a lot of people have some real misconceptions about driving and driving standards in Russia. Most of that comes from a lot of the dash cam videos that you'll see on YouTube and other sites, which seems to give everybody the impression that, uh, that driving in Russia is a complete lottery, that you're taking your life in your hands every time you get in the car. That's not the case. The reason there's so many dash cam videos is that a lot more Russian drivers have dash cams fitted in the cars than, than most other countries. Hence, with it being such a big country, there's a lot of these videos knocking about. Um, that's not to say that driving standards are brilliant, they're not. They're certainly not up to UK standards on the whole. Uh, and the accident rate's pretty poor in Russia. But actually, it's a, it's a very civilised country, there's no real issues. Um, it's not like driving through some parts of Africa or <clears throat> the Far East. So we're driving through Sota Valor at the moment and we're heading out of town on one of the main roads and it's a road that we've used a couple of times for some driver training while we've been here. Very nice driver's road. It's been a pleasant surprise to find the roads like this up here in Karelia. Some of the roads I've driven on in Moscow and uh, in Siberia, Chelyabinsk, have been a little bit boring, long straight stretches of road. Uh, but that's how the Russians tend to build the roads. Russia's a huge country, they need to cover vast distances. So the quickest way to do that a lot of the time is in a straight line. But up here, uh, this part of Russia used to be Finland prior to the Second World War. So it's got much more of a Finnish Scandinavian feel about it. Uh, and the roads have some very interesting corners, bends. As a driver, it's a much more interesting place to drive up here in, in the north of Russia. So if you watched the previous video, we talked about um, the basics of driving on the right, driving a left-hand vehicle, left-hand drive vehicle in a country where they drive on the right. Obviously in Russia, they drive on the right. Um, you need to get used to local customs as well. It's different driving here than it is in Finland. Not massively different, but there are some differences. Uh, road surfaces are hugely variable in Russia. Uh, some of the new road surfaces that we've been driving on while we've been up here have been fantastic, really smooth. Uh, they seem to do a proper job of resurfacing the roads when they build a new road surface. Certainly on dry days, the condition of the road surfaces, and some of them have been fantastic, others have been absolutely appalling. And then there's many roads that are anywhere in between that. Um, we imagine, well, before I first came to Russia, I imagined it was just horrendously potholed everywhere you went. It's not that bad, to be honest. Some of the rougher tracks, some of the gravel roads and the, the unmade roads are in really poor condition. Some of the tarmac surfaces are pretty poor, but most of them are, are actually quite good. They build the roads, certainly the roads in between towns, the major routes, they build them in the modern style where the road tends to be slightly raised up and most of the corners are a constant radius. So as you drive into a corner, pretty much straight away you find the tightness of the corner and you don't end up being caught out by it tightening up or opening up. That's not to say that all the corners are like that. And there's a few on this next section of road that we're going to drive on shortly that, um, that are a bit more traditional, old school European roads. But pretty much most of the major roads, and certainly the major road up to the Finnish border that we went on yesterday, some very fast flowing open corners on it. 
very nice roads to drive actually. So now we've left the town. We're out in the countryside, we're on something that more of a typical road that you find in between towns in Russia. Well, it's probably not fair to say it's a typical road. The country is so huge. Um, it, you know, the, the, the variety of countryside covered across Russia is massive, so it's probably wrong to say there is a typical type of road in Russia. But this is certainly representative of the type of roads that you get in between towns, in between major built-up areas. Quite fast and flowing. You get into the groove, get into the rhythm. Come up behind slow moving vehicles, look for the overtake, etc. Uh, quite enjoyable roads to drive. You can see the road conditions are pretty good, uh, not too much traffic. So you can drive along a bit on your own, at your own pace, then catch up with something for the overtake. Um, Russian drivers, contrary probably to popular opinion, uh, are not or don't seem to be particularly aggressive. There's obviously, like any culture, there are a few aggressive idiots, but. Most of them are pretty tolerant. They're very tolerant to overtaking as well. Russians have a pretty unique way of overtaking. They get very, very close to the car in front or the vehicle in front uh, to the extent that they really lose a view and then suddenly just dart out on the overtake. And there seems to be a, a culture of relying on other people to help them with the overtakes. But it seems that somebody in Russia is faced with an overtaking vehicle. They're quite happy to slow down, pull over to the right move out of the way they don't tend to make that overtake more difficult they tend to make it as easy as they possibly can and that's not to say that that's the overtaking style that i adopt when i'm over here or that i teach to the students uh, i still use exactly the same techniques i use in the uk following position move out to look flexible gear accelerate past when we're absolutely sure that it's clear um, and for some of the Russian students, that's been a, a bit of a change in, in, in methodology for them. A bit of a change in technique. But they all seem to be adopting to it very nicely and they appreciate that safer feeling of the overtake. It's a little bit, I think I've talked about overtaking before, it's a little bit like when you're travelling up in Scotland, you're travelling long distances in between towns on single carriageway roads. You don't want you know you want to drive at your own pace you don't want to be held up behind somebody driving at uh, slower speed for any length of time because it really does impact on your journey now signage on russian roads is quite interesting they do use quite a lot of signs but they're limited in the sort of scope of the signs that you see this is a common one a descent or an ascent and what you've got to remember is that in this part of russia and many parts of russia they get real winters, they get really cold winter conditions. So these ascent and descent signs are relevant to the heavy goods drivers. You'll see numbers that you won't usually see in the UK, 4%, 5%, those kind of hills are never an issue in the UK. But over here, if you're driving a heavy goods vehicle in winter, that makes a significant impact on your journey. Uh, you know, quite often in, in uh, Siberia and Chelyabinsk in the Ural Mountains we were seeing vehicles just completely stuck on hills struggling to get up. Another common sign that you'll see on these roads is no overtaking or overtaking prohibited. You use that sign far more than you see it in the UK. You very rarely see that sign in the UK. They tend to use so the double white lines and other restrictions to prevent you from overtaking where it's not safe. Here they're very specific, they tell you when you are not allowed to overtake. And I find that those signs, you know, really on the whole are in the right places, they're in the right areas. Um, those warnings, we always take them seriously. You notice that there's a little sticker in the back of the car in front with a W on it, that's a warning sign to other drivers in winter that he's using studded winter tyres. So that he might stop quicker than you if you're only using ordinary rubber winter tyres. Just a little extra warning. Now these zebra crossings, these pedestrian crossings are very common. 
pedestrians have priority if you see them approaching or if you see them on the crossing you have to stop I've even seen them on motorways in the past though certainly over in um, over in Chelly near Chelyabinsk several crossings on motorways which makes you think but this is a nice spot we've got the road going alongside the lake a nice view across the lake there to the road in the distance a real Scandinavian feel about it, this road. You notice that in this part of Russia the road signs are in both European letters and Cyrillic letters. That's one of the significant differences for you for, as, as, a, as a Brit driving in Russia. You can't really read the road signs until you start to get to learn what some of the letters mean. So here, for the left-hander, I'm going to position into the near side, just squeeze the brakes, take third gear and watch the limit point. Just gauge how I accelerate through the corner with the limit point. Exactly the same as we do in the UK or any other roads. The techniques, the skills are all exactly the same. A little bit of a pinch point here where we've got priority over oncoming traffic. Really want to meet a heavy goods vehicle there so I'm looking up ahead brake lights on the car in the distance up ahead and again one of these signs that warns us of a descent not a steep descent it's only six percent you'd never see that in the UK but it's relevant to the lorry drivers over here especially in winter and another one four percent these little red chevrons are quite useful they seem to put them all the way around the corner most of the way around the corner so they act as a sort of indicator where the limit point is. Even if you can't see the road surface, they help you work out the tightness of the corner. That's the end of the no overtaking restriction. So maybe we'll pick the pace up now and see if we can get an overtake in. Yeah. It's a junction on the right, but that's absolutely clear. There's no issues with that. Nice safe overtake. Up into fourth gear. Check the mirrors. Back to the right before the double white lines. Bright lights on the car in front now just a squeeze of brakes and then over the crest and then rolling up into a following position on the car in front now there's a car stopped on the right with an indicator on so i'm going to check the mirrors move away from that give them a little bit of room in case the door opens and then just squeeze the brakes to get us into a following position on the car in front i'm going to take third gear now starting to look for the opportunity to overtake this car in a right position gently on the brakes i've already got third gear which is nice and flexible looking past the car on the left hand side and again the road's going round to the left that nice indicator that we're talking about in finland where the the trees i suppose it's um it's the perspective of the trees getting further away from you the top of the trees seem to lean either left or right and they lean in the direction that the road's going in nice little indicator whether it's a left-hander or a right-hander a back of a warning sign there and these roads are they, they really are a delight these they, these Karelian roads are very very nice there we've got an opportunity to overtake so I'm checking the mirrors got flat on the floor now in third gear off the gas check the mirrors back in before the no overtaking sign of the double white lines we're not braking for this corner, the speed's okay, just gently squeezing the gas as we go around. Keeping the car balanced all the way around the corner. And then coming into a village. So this sign here, Rauta Lacti, that acts as a speed limit sign. So you all have to be aware of that when you're driving in Russia, when you come into a built-up area. Acts as a speed limit sign. So we bring it down, speed limit 60 in built-up areas. 60 kilometers an hour, not miles an hour. So we'll try and keep it on or around the 60 kilometers an hour mark as it is because there's more hazards around here. Extending the view into the distance now, I can see a truck going away from us in the same direction as us and a car approaching the back of that. Another reduction in speed limit there down to 40 kph. And you can see why there's pedestrian crossings and people out with the children. So we'll just keep it down at or around 40, 45 k as we go through here. And if the, what we tend to find is if the police are going to do speed enforcement, they're more likely to do it in these areas. Although we 
I do see them on more of the open roads occasionally as well. There are a few speed cameras in Russia, some of the older Gatso types, but there's also another type where it's sort of fitted to a gantry over the road. They're fairly obvious, if you can't see that there's something wrong with you. The yellow diamond with the white border on it indicates that we're on the priority route, so anybody joining this road should give priority to us. And you'll see those in other parts of Europe as well, we saw them in Finland yesterday. So there's the end of the no overtaking restriction there. We're out of that 40 limit now. But this, believe it or not, is still a built-up area in Russia. <laughs> I think there's one house over there. <laughs> Up in the distance, you'll see um, another sign, very similar to the last one as we came into the village, with the name of the village on it, but then a red diagonal line through it. That means that's the end of the village and it's the end of that speed restricted area. So we'll take third gear on the approach to that, just making sure there's nobody overtaking this JCB. Route of Lacti, there's the end, check the mirrors and start to squeeze the gas again. But the yellow signs up ahead are roadwork signs. That was one there, men at work, um, a temporary 70 kph speed limit. So we'll ease off in third and the 50 and the road narrowing from the offside from the right sorry that's the near side over here uh, and a distance there 500 meters there's a little uaz one of my favorite russian vehicles not one of my favorite russian vehicles my absolute favorite russian vehicles the russians call it the loaf it looks like a loaf of bread i've got a real yearning for a, an uaz and as we come over here it looks like the road books are gone cleared up finished so we'll squeeze the gas again. They've cleared the roll books up and left the signs out. I'm going to keep third gear for this right-hander now, checking the mirrors, squeezing the gas, looking at the limit point. You see the limit point starting to run, so third gear is holding us nicely through the corner, keeping the car balanced. And then up for the crest in the road, I'm going to come off the gas. There is a warning for double bends. In the UK, I would say double bends first one to the right, but I'm told that you shouldn't always trust the signs in Russia. It's whatever they've got lying around on the day. In that case, it was telling the truth. Up ahead now, we've got those little chevron signs. Check the mirrors. Right position, gentle brakes. Looks like it's dropping down and round to the left. Let's take third gear. Keep it into the right. We don't want to cut these left-handers moment you start cutting those left-handers early a truck will come around the corner the other way and you'll have to make a very quick adjustment. I've just seen a couple of people crossing the road up ahead walking towards the car on the left. One of the things you see quite a lot in these areas of Russia up and down the road people park the cars and then go off into the woods picking mushrooms. Very popular. So up ahead now I can see the road. Looks like it bends round to the right in the distance. Checking the mirrors, positioning towards the centre line, starting to squeeze the brakes now for this right-hander. Keeping fourth gear off the brakes, gently on the gas. And now there's a junction to the right, a couple of vehicles parked on either side of the road. This truck is the one that I saw earlier, checking the mirrors, and I'm moving right away from him. Be very, very careful with some of these vehicles. They can all of a sudden pull a U-turn in the road. We've all seen those videos on YouTube. So up ahead now, there's a railway bridge. This square sign with the thick black line on it, it's a crossroads and the thick black line denotes the priority. So we have priority, but I'm gonna wait here. <laughs> as we say in the UK, might as right. I'm not gonna get into an argument with a Kamaz truck coming the other way. So I'm gonna keep it into the right, well away from any oncoming trucks the end of the no overtaking restriction. There's pedestrians in the road and a warning sign for a filling station. Petrol's really cheap in Russia, 45p a litre at the moment. It's an oil rich country. So 
So we've got a sign there, road narrows from both sides, oncoming traffic has priority in 150 metres and a gated level crossing. So we're checking the mirrors, bringing the speed down. These aren't always that smooth, this one definitely isn't. And always have a quick check for trains as well. There is a train there but it's stationary. <laughs> as we were coming out of Finland yesterday into Russia, we came up to a level crossing, the lights were flashing and there was a train coming. And the train stopped, the driver waved us through. That's a, that was a first for all of us, it was a first even for the Russians, that one. Now, coming up behind this JCB, I might normally be thinking there's an opportunity to nip past it here, but there is a no overtaking sign just past where the JCB is. So I'm going to change down to second gear, keep a nice long following position. And the other thing with these vehicles is they turn off, they don't go very far. And I can't see the back of the driver at the moment. I'm trying to see if I can see him in the mirrors. I can't see him at the moment. A number of things coming towards us. Pedestrian crossing down in the bottom of the dip. So, so many reasons not to overtake, so we'll just hold back at the moment. industrial looking river there another pedestrian crossing I'm just going to drop back and have a look down the right hand side of this JCB if there is an opportunity to roll past it I will do there's still an overtaking sign there doesn't help us but it's a long right hander with no view checking the mirrors sometimes some of the Russian drivers don't really pay attention to these no overtaking signs I think now in view of the speed of the vehicle we're going to check the mirrors and roll past it very quickly. And we can do that with minimal risk. So looking up ahead now, they're all bending round to the right. It's a very impressive statue there off to the right. No idea who that is. Now we're coming out of the village now some traditional sort of wooden houses on the left here. Now I'm trying to keep my speed down in the built up area but not everybody's the same. I've no doubt in a few hundred yards we'll end up catching up with him again. He's breaking because there's a speed camera on the lamp post. So there's the end of the village. Starting to squeeze the gas and build the speed up a little bit again. So there we are, there's a tester of driving in Russia. If you've never been over here before. I, uh, I thoroughly recommend it actually, I really like Russia, the Russians are very friendly, it's, um, it's a very very interesting country to come and visit uh, and don't shy away from driving while you're over here as well, come and hire a car, come and have a drive on Russian roads, nowhere near as intimidating or dangerous as you might think it is, it's actually a really nice country to drive around. Just be very aware of some of the local differences. Especially things like the truck that we saw before, trundling along, reversing along the, the, uh, the side of the road. Just be aware that some of those drivers could do anything and give them a wide berth, but most of the time it's a very safe and enjoyable country to drive in. So that's it for now, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you want to know more about advanced and performance driving, go and have a look at the website, regilocal.com. And we'll see you next time.